Greetings, and thank you for your interest in the Warrant Officer Recruiting Recruitment Program from the Warrant Officer Recruiting Company. This presentation will guide you through the application process and procedures. Please do not hesitate to contact us with any questions on the various platforms. Let's get started. The Warrant Officer Recruiting Company operates in CONUS and OCONUS installations across the globe equipped with Warrant Officers and Senior NCOs to assist and seek out highly qualified in-service and inter-service applicants to serve as Army Warrant Officers. Many of you are already aware that the Warrant Officer MOSs are broken down into technicians and aviators. The technicians usually requires applicants to be an E5 or above, completed the advanced leaders course, and have the pertinent prerequisites related to the specific MOS. All prerequisites are listed on the Go Warrant Now website with the associated Proponent Warrant Officers PLC information for questions concerning technical qualification requirements. On the aviation side, applicants are assessed and selected as Warrant Officer MOS 153 Alpha, which is open to all MOSs provided you pass the Selection Instrument for Flight Training Exam, or SIF, with a score of 40 or above, and the, pass the Class 1 Flight Physical. The SIF is one of the most important aspects of the aviation application. It is highly recommended that applicants obtain the necessary study material from the installation library, the clothing and sales store, or other online retailers to help them achieve the best score possible. The SIF is a lifetime score, and upon passing, you have zero opportunities to increase your score. However, if you fail to achieve a score of 40, you may retest after 45 days has passed since your last test. VA PAM 600-3. The display slide depicts the five Warrant Officer ranks, the attributes we possess, and our unique contribution to the United States Army. Many of you may have experienced us in the training and advising roles within the units you are currently assigned. These are just a few characteristics that Warrant Officers possess and what senior warrant officers are looking for in applicants who want to become part of the warrant officer cohort. Promotion timing. Upon graduation from warrant officer candidate school, walks, you will pin warrant officer one. Promotion timeline varies depending on your warrant officer MOS. For aviators, 153 alphas. Upon graduation from flight school, your warrant officer one time will reset. You will pin chief warrant officer two, two years after completing flight school and six years thereafter. For Cyber Capabilities Developer Technician, 170 Deltas, two years after WALKS graduation, you will pin Chief Warrant Officer 2 and every six years thereafter. All other technicians, two years after completing WALKS, you will pin on Chief Warrant Officer 2 and every five years thereafter. Extended Career. As a Warrant Officer, you can do an additional 30 years of service from the time you pin on Warrant Officer 1. You will have to make all promotions through CW5 to accomplish this you have the opportunity to serve longer than any enlisted soldier. The base pay comparison chart depicts two distinct career paths in the military. The two general military categories of rank is enlisted and one officer. Each rank comes with a set of responsibilities that enable service members to fully contribute their talents to the military. The pay scales for each reflect their varying degrees responsibility. As you can see, the snapshot, a staff sergeant, and a W01 with 10 years time of service has a difference of $861 in base pay. This chart is a great visual when comparing enlisted to one officer pay. This slide depicts also financial incentives for officers serving as military aviators throughout their military career. These amazing payments ranges from $125 to $1,000, in which is determined by years of aviation service as a warrant officer. Pilots with more than 10 years of aviation service can receive $1,000 per month instead of pay. At this point, you may be asking, where do I begin? You can review steps and explore different options on this page. Our website, GoWarrantNow.com, will be the primary location you will spend most of your time. The first place is to click on Do I Qualify? This will determine if you are eligible for any Warrant Officer MOS before beginning an application. This location will give you all the requirements for applying to become a Warrant Officer, which we will cover on the next slide. On this slide, you will find the administrative qualifications in order to successfully apply for the Warrant Officer program. 
The first four in red are non-negotiable with no waivers for these requirements. The most questions that are asked is, I have a GT score of 109. Can they waive that one point? I recommend all applicants to work closely with their education center to raise that score to a 110. Many education centers can assist with helping you minimize time out of work by providing study material. I recommend you go to goarmyed.com. Highlighted in green, we have exceptions to policies available. The most common are age and AFS waivers. If you exceed these timelines, do not let this discourage you from applying as many waivers are granted during each board. Listed on the next two slides are the warrant officer specialties, titles, and Army enlisted feeder specialties. Highlighted in green are the specialties open to all applicants that qualify. Highlighted in red are some of the critically low specialties. Some warrant officer specialties accept applicants from all branches of service. This section of the briefing will discuss submission timelines. Be sure to visit the website for the latest board schedule and corresponding deadlines. New applications should be submitted six to eight weeks before the board. Corrections are due four to six weeks before the board. Updates can be submitted as desired up to three weeks before the board. It is imperative to submit applications requiring waivers or exceptions to policies four to 12 weeks prior to the new packet deadline. The How Do I Apply tab of the Go Warrant Now website is your one-stop shop for all documents, memorandums, examples, and submission instructions that you will utilize throughout this process. If you haven't saved this to your favorites, I highly recommend it as it will be key to putting together a successful packet. Use the examples located next to every form to ensure your packet is error free. You may get assistance and guidance from other warrant officers who have successfully completed this process, which is great, but please make sure you get all forms and downloads from this site as they are the most current versions. The DA Form 61, Application for Appointment. The first form you'll fill out is the DA 61. I recommend using the example provided on our website in order to accurately complete each page. This form, and many others throughout the packet, requires specific information and dates to complete. On the last page, Block 41, your commander will verify that you meet the height and weight standards in accordance with AR 600-9. Copy and paste this validation statement from the sample provided and insert your commander's information. The DA-61 will be complete once you sign and date the last line on the application. The DA-61 may either be digitally signed or wet signed. Letters of Recommendation You will need three letters of recommendation to accompany your completed packet. The first two levels of UCMJ authority, which in most cases is your company and battalion commander, will write the first two LORs. The third letter will be from a senior warrant officer, Chief Warrant Officer 3, Chief Warrant Officer 4, or Chief Warrant Officer 5 from the field you are applying to. If you are applying for more than one Warrant Officer MOS, you will need an additional letter of recommendation for each additional MOS you are applying for. Letters of recommendation are good for one year or 90 days after a PCS or change of command. We have provided some helpful tips to the letter of recommendation writer to assist them in this process. These forms must be digitally signed upon their completion. The user form 3.2 one officer resume is a written compilation of your education, military, and civilian experience, training, and accomplishments. The process of putting together your resume can be time consuming. I recommend using all available resources while completing your resume, such as your soldier's records brief, evaluations, and ATAR's transcript. This resume is your first impression of your writing skills so ensure it is reviewed by several personnel for proper grammar, punctuation, and syntax. Make your resume easy to read and be clear and concise. Convey your skills on how you're going to provide value to the one officer cohort. The security clearance verification form is used to verify clearance status and level of clearance. The form is filled out by your S2 or security manager. Please ensure your clearances are valid and not expired for the appropriate level to meet the required prerequisites for the one officer MOS you are applying for. Ensure the form is completely filled out as seen on the example provided on the website. 
Use the work form 3.1 physical cover sheet is designed to protect applicant sensitive health information. This cover sheet is completed by your medical treatment facility or provider. If you are applying to be a technician, this form is included in your application to show results of medical examination. No other medical forms should be included in your packet unless you require a medical waiver. Waiver documents should include your DD Form 2808, DD Form 2807-1, profile, if applicable, and commissioned lab results. If the provider does not have a stamp, they must provide a memorandum stating as such. DA Form 160 is the application for active duty, as most soldiers refer to as wish list or dream sheet for duty station preference. Please follow the example on the website as your guide. And remember, Block 9 for aviators should reflect 10 years active duty service obligation and technicians should reflect 6 years active duty service obligation. Please read the Statement of Understanding thoroughly. Do not remove any paragraphs. Complete the signature block with your information and either digitally sign or wet sign the document. Reference this table to see if you require any waivers or ETPs. I'll provide clarification of the most common types of waivers required. Technicians must be 46 years old at time of appointment to W-1 and have less than 12 years active federal service at time the DA-61 is signed by the applicant. Aviators must be 32 years old or younger at time the packet is boarded and have less than eight years active federal service at the time the DA-61 is signed by the applicant. A tattoo waiver is required if you are not in accordance with AR 670-1. A tattoo validation memo from previously documented tattoos are not grandfathered and require a tattoo waiver for warrant officer sessions. A conduct waiver is required when a court has convicted or imposed to include UCMJ action or other type of adverse disposition for an incident. Contact a warrant officer recruiter if you require further clarification on any of the waivers or ETPs listed. The following slides provide examples of all waivers and ETPs. A tattoo compliance validation memo is required for all inner service applicants. This memo will be completed and signed by an O5 or higher in your chain of command. Applicants that have tattoos that are not in accordance with AR 670-1 will complete a self-signed memo in addition to having an O5 or higher in their chain of command complete a tattoo ETP. Tattoo waivers will include at a minimum color photos showing length and width measurements of all applicable tattoos. Reference the website or contact a warrant officer recruiter for further guidance. Waiver and exceptional policy templates can be found on our website. They are great tools to help you with formatting your exceptional policy. Use this checklist as a guide for proper order of application when submitting. Please fill out the top portion of this checklist for your administrative data. The IPSA employee number only applies to Army applicants. There will be initials and two signatures required for this document. First will be your unit S1 OIC, NC OIC, or GS civilian. They will be verifying that you are not flagged or barred from re-enlistment. Additionally, they will confirm that your tattoo documentation is within accordance with AR 670-1. They will also ensure you are not on drill or an assignment. If you are, you must serve 18 months minimum before you are able to submit a warrant officer application. You can contact your regional warrant officer recruiter in regards to exceptions to policy. Second signature will be your senior warrant officer that signed your letter of recommendation within the warrant officer MOS you are applying for. The application process is initiated and completed by the applicant. Complete packets are submitted to the warrant officer recruiting mailbox for review to ensure administrative qualifications are met. We ensure required documents are submitted and completed correctly. We do not make subjective determinations such as resume or evaluation content. Packets are sent to you for corrections or to the proponent for technical qualifications and waiver recommendations.
Waivers and exception to policies are determined before final re regulatory qualifications and board preparation. Here are some key notes to be mindful of during the application process. I want to highlight that you get two board looks if you are not selected on your first board. You do not have to update your packet unless you feel there is a significant change or document that may impact your selection. If you are not selected on the second look, you must wait 12 months from the date that you signed your DA-61 to reapply for that MOS. Please ensure that you are familiar with and bookmark our website, GoWarrantNow.com. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram for the latest updates regarding the Warrant Officer Accessions process. Please direct all technical qualification questions to the proponent or a senior warrant officer in your organization. Please also be mindful of the submission instructions and follow them closely. As always, if you need assistance or an update, please contact your local warrant officer recruiter. If you have forgotten everything we've said during this briefing, just know that our website has the most comprehensive information on all things warrant officer packets and applications and requirements. Feel free to contact a recruiter with any questions www.gowarrantnow.com is the best resource to obtain the most up-to-date information regarding the Warrant Officer Procurement Program requirements. We highly encourage you to visit this website throughout the entire application process. When you select the Contact Us page of the website, you will find the physical address, email, and phone number for each recruiter. We look forward to your visit. This slide depicts the location of each regional recruiter standing by to serve you. Note, we are on major Army installations. Thank you for your attention during this briefing. We look forward to your application. Remember, go warrant now.